Good morning. Again, uh, we are to begin the Divine Liturgy, uh, which is, uh, again, this week is the uh, fifth uh, uh, Sunday of Lent, uh, uh, meaning that we have just one more week of, uh, of fasting and uh, keeping ourselves uh, in the, as much purity of, uh, of the faith as possible. And uh, these days, I, I, I think and I hope uh, that uh, what is going on in the world, we can put it uh, in a positive way, uh, that uh, by staying home, uh, uh, as we ought to and we should, uh, actually it's going to be a point of that where we must, and that's fine. Let's, uh, let's use that time uh, in a very positive way, uh, where uh, we may uh, read more, uh, uh, contemplate, and, uh, and uh, understand that we are still in Lent, and that uh, uh, all, Almighty God is uh, with us and, and watching uh, over us. We are about to uh, uh, begin the uh, Divine Liturgy, and I'll just remind you uh, uh, again, as I did last week, uh, that while you're watching, uh, to be again uh, uh, as, as though you are here in church itself, uh, to, uh, to be sure that you uh, uh, do not get up and eat while you're watching the liturgy, uh, that you keep your posture as you, you, you would uh, in church to sing along with uh, the, the chanter and, and the priest again and to uh, again to uh, to have yourself uh, you're not physically here but you are spiritually here and to uh, and to watch and, and to observe and to pray uh, the divine liturgy uh, in your hearts and in your bodies uh, meaning that if you remember when you should stand stand uh, and when you sit, then that would be fine too. Either way, uh, it's fine. Uh, uh, so again, let's turn, let's take these days and uh, make them positive, and make them positive. Uh, uh, just a reminder that uh, all the sacraments are available to you at any time. Uh, when you receive Holy Communion, you are you you may receive Holy Communion at any time. And I would uh, say that when you do receive Holy Communion, uh, you could call me and I will be here. There were some people who have come to us during the week. Uh, and I would say that uh, when you come in the door to uh, sanitize your hands, uh, make sure you're sanitized, uh, come up to the, uh, to the chalice, uh, receive Holy Communion, uh, and then, uh, go, uh, then go out uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, 
and enjoy your day. So anyway, so the sacraments are open to all of us. And uh, when, uh, again, uh, sanitize the hands. And then when you leave, actually, sanitize your hands as well. And that way we are uh, in conformity with uh, the requirements uh, that uh, are given to us, uh, which are urgent, uh, as, uh, as uh, we hear over and over these days. Again, uh, the resurrection, it's a day of the resurrection. It's uh, the, the Lord's day, and let us uh, worship uh, as we ought uh, you know, in, uh, in all of things.
He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Hey, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. For the forgiveness of sin.
keep you in a hot foot table concerning your church and all your people that are truly faithful for your conduct and your duty to bring your people to stay wide in all piety and holiness. Sustain the good in your goodness. Make the way you good through your goodness. Remember all the people here presented and all those who are actually the good cause. Have mercy on them and let us according to the multitude of your mercy. Fill to their treasure and you live with them. Preserve their values of peace and holy. Nurture the infants, instruct the youth, strengthen the age. Give courage to the faint heart. Reunite those who separate. Bring back those in error and unite them to your holy castle of the Son of Church. Free those who are held captive by our Holy Spirit. Spare them and sell them from this hell, travel from the travel. Defend the widows, protect the orphans, liberate the captives, heal the sick. Remember all those who are in the ways, in exile, in harsh labor, and those in every kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Those who have been treated all the kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those who you are asking us to pray for, for, for them, unworthy though we may be. Remember, Lord, our God, all your people and poor out of your mercy upon them, granting them their petition for salvation. Remember, O oh God, all those who we have not remembered to your ignorance and gentleness, or because of their multitude, since you know the name and age of each, even from their mother's womb. For you, Lord, are the help of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the Savior of the afflicted, the hater of the voyager, and the physician of the sick. He all things the law, you who know each person, his request, his household, and his need. Deliver this community and city of the Lord. And every city and town from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, invasion of foreign enemies and civil war. And blessed bread and multiply throughout your world, especially to those nations in need. This we ask for your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be made for the name of the Amen. Above all, remember the Lord our Archbishop of the Lord, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years. Try to keep the Lord of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those who rejoice about the mind, and all your people. Your destructions can come in every day. Keep on going, keep on strong. Keep on going, keep on strong. And grant that with one voice and one heart, we may glorify and praise the most honor of your majestic name. Of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever as we get to the day of the Lord. Amen. Yes, the fair name of the God said, You can show me to one and two and it's true. Get back on and go anymore. Get back on to the Matosho. One good time in the year, let us have a chance to get out of here and to give you a moment. Deliver us from you. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and to the age of the age of Amen. Peace be unto you all. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads unto you all. Lord, bless the Father, and mercy to God, and for your consolation. Let us say, for I God, for if I accept those who have not added to you. Kiss me instead for every evil deed. Lead them gently to the work. And make them worthy to partake of our foundation of those of these the most pure and life to be listened for the forgiveness of sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. God, if you gave them this gift of the Lord, be in the morning and those who live for a holy ghost, see you go for a year, back up for the first time of the new family, and he should sell us on the altar. Are you right ahead of us and toward our feet? Yeah. 
Dorothy, Alexandra, and Yorgos, in a place of light, in a place of repose, in a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, and suffering. It's a good enough God to give every sin they have committed in all order of you. For there is no one who lives and does not sin. You are not without sin, your righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and your word is true.
that we are not to be, they want to be served. When we ask to be first, that means we are to be served. So it's so. So that's what they thought. And God says, I Jesus says, I didn't come here to be served. I came to serve. I gave I came to give myself to you, to humanity. That's what I did. I came here to give myself to, to humanity. And he said, and he says that and he says that if you if you want to be first, you're you're gonna be you would be last. But those who are last will be first. In other words, those who are humble, those who serve, those who give of themselves, those who give of themselves for others, they will be the first. They will be the first. Again, as I said, as every gospel would relate to what we're going through today. What we're going through today. You know, who are the servers? Again, we, we know and we, see, we hear it on TV all the time. Who's in the front lines? Who's in the front lines these days? The doctors, the nurses, those who are, and truly they were, they were applauded in New York City, if you watch television, they were, why were they applauded? Because they were on the front line. They were serving the people at the risk of death, even death, to being sick and being dead. It's the same, it's a war. When soldiers go to war, when we had Second World War, they didn't want to go to necessarily the war, but they went. They went, and so many of themselves lost their lives. And they were truly servants of, of, of God by serving other people. So here we have uh, these servers uh, that are, again, are not to be served, but to serve, even to their own life, even to their own life. I'm proud to say in our community that we do have, we have doctors and we have nurses as well. We have, uh, I'll, I'll mention their names, uh, the, at least the nurses, we know the doctors. And we know the, some of the nurses, some of the nurses I think we don't know is the Fitzpatrick uh, uh, Jerome's who are Father Jacobus' daughters. Uh, they're serving and, and yes, they're nervous. I spoke with Father Jacobus, he's nervous because they're on the front lines. And they are, they are doing that. What was the alternative? To go and back off and say, no, I'm not going to no, do this, I'm going to stay home. And some, I'm sure, did that. How about the heroes of those who they call out of retirement? The doctors and the nurses out of retirement, because we need more of them. And they came out and they began to, uh, and they're serving them. They're serving them. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's truly, uh, in a sense, a martyrdom, because to get sick and to die is to give yourself, your life, your blood to, the, uh, to other people, to Christ. And that's again, uh, again, part of our community. And uh, I'm proud to say that we do have doctors uh, and, uh, and nurses who, uh, who do serve in that way. So what is Christ saying to us? Not to be served, but to serve. Others have said, we'd like to serve. I'd like to know how you would like to serve. We'd like to serve the church. Come forward and say it. How would you like to serve? Does somebody need anything? Does somebody need uh, uh, deliveries or whatever it is? Are you willing to go out and do it? I need money. Are you willing to do it? I heard people say, we'll, we'll call, we'll say, we'll serve, we'll do, you know, we'll do, we'll do. I want to know who, specifically. What can you do? What will you do? Who's going to get the calls? The church. We'll get the call and we'll do the best that we can. But I want to know specifically, how would we serve? How would we serve? What are you willing to give? What are you willing to give? This is the project for us to work later. Later. Now, if somebody says, I'm willing to do this, I'm willing to do that, fine. But it's a good lesson for us, I believe, because I was thinking about it. Shouldn't we not be doing this anyway? Should we not have a reserve of when people are truly in trouble, that that we as a church as a whole are able to uh, able to uh, supply uh, help and to do the things that we ought to do as a church? Yes, we ought to. I will I will mention this to our parish council when we, when we gather that to say, well, what are we willing to do specifically, not generally? We will serve, but specifically. How will you serve? How will we serve?
And I think again, we take a bad issue that we have and are living in now and turn it around to make it something good. That's what we want to do. So the Lord gives us this lesson. He says, I'm going to go to my death. Are you willing to go with me? And who was at the who was at the crucifixion? Nobody but one of them, John. They all fled. When the troubles came, they, they took off, they went. And one day they finally realized that yes, I would do that, is when he was resurrected and they saw him. And now they said, Yes, I will even die for my Christ. And they did. All the apostles were martyred except one, and that was John. All of them were, were either crucified, hanged, burnt alive, or whatever tortures that they received, they all received it because they were willing, because of their belief in their, in their, in their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. A good lesson for all of us. Again, for us individually to say, how will I serve? How much am I willing to give? That's a question that all of us, I think, have to reflect on ourselves and say, yes, I will do this. Or, no, I will not do it. That's personal. Between you and the Lord, and that's it. You and the Lord. So God bless you all and keep you. Again, uh, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier before we started, and all the sacraments are available at any time. Call me. You want to receive Holy Communion? Uh, come. And I would say again before you receive, you sanitize your hands. Uh, when you leave, sanitize your hands again. Receive the Holy Body and Blood of our Lord. If you wish to come to confession, I'm here. Uh, if you have any emergencies at home, I will be there. Whatever it may be. Confession, ointment, uh, anointing, whatever it may be. Uh, that I will be there uh, at your call. And God bless you all. May Christ our true God, who rose from the dead is a living and living merciful God, have mercy on us and save us. Our intercession goes to our Lord, and our last year in our cross. The intercession of our Lord, and our last year in our cross. The intercession of our Lord, and our last year in our cross. The intercession of our Lord, and our saints, Mary of Egypt, the mother of Egypt, Saint George, the new martyr, Theodora, and Dionysius, the martyrs, whose memory we commemorate today and of all the saints. Dear Father, we pray that anyone who gives you the and I ask you this also, you are